I'm making a bunch of these prismatic blocks. This prismatic cutout here has to match the bed of a watchmaker's lathe very precisely. So the scraping to do the final matchup by, by bluing and spotting uh, goes fast. And the problem with this is, this is of course dimensioned over pins. Normally you would take something like, like two pins in here. Like this. And probably put a clamp on top so they don't move around. And then you put gauge blocks in between to, to get your actual dimension. But that's a lot of parts. You need the two pins, you need something to hold them in place, and you need the gauge blocks, and it's, it, it gets messy if you have to do more than one. I'm doing 11 of these, so that's not an option. I have to measure them in the machine while I'm grinding, grinding the size of this uh, cutout. I was looking around for ideas, and of course, <laughs> Robin Run said he had, had shown a gauge on Instagram that was very close to what I need for, for this purpose. His one was OD measuring. He was measuring a length of a gear. And I want to measure the, the internal dimension of a part from pin to pin. But his design was really slick. Um, it, it used a dial test indicator and a, a flexer and was just nice design. So I, I, I did some CAD work, uh, sketched out the, my two pin dimensions here. These come, came out of, out of CAD, out of a real CAD system, not my comic assist drawing here. The, the stem of the dial test indicator reaching down here close to the pin measuring behind the pin and that was my first concept. Then I made a, a actual drawing to, to build the thing. Um, down here the, the cross hatch part is of course my, my this piece here. And I have the two rollers here which get silver soldered to the body of this whole contraption. Here is the slot for the flexor. The dial test indicator goes up here. And yeah, it's really simple. In the end, I came up with this. Uh, that's what I built. It took about two and a half hours, including the sketching. The body is just a piece of cold rolled, uh, low carbon steel. The two rollers are um, tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide rollers cut off to length and silver soldered in. <laughs> Some of my best silver solder joints. Uh, and uh, a glass bead aluminum oxide blast finish. The dial test indicator goes on a standard um, indicator stem here. Can be adjusted when I open the screw. I can tap it in and out slightly to, to get a rough alignment. And final zeroing is of course done by moving the, by zeroing out the dial. The way this works, the cross section here is very thin. So this is a flexure. It can bend. If I, if I push these two parts together, I get a reading up here on the indicator. And that's the whole magic to this uh, device. The way this works is you drop it into the between the gauge blocks and then you pivot it like a, a dial bore gauge to find your high spot, just like this. And when you get your high spot, you, you turn the dial to zero and you're good to go. Very easy, very repeatable uh, calibration procedure. And then to measure, you take the, the whole device drop it into the, the prismatic cutout here and press down on both ends. And then you take a, a reading. Let me show you from this side so you can see the dial. There is our reading. This is a good part. Um, 
and this allows me to take measurements in the machine while I'm grinding or <laughs> in between grinding passes. We're over at the surface grinder and this is the way I'm grinding this pr the, these prisms. Um, over here is the grinding wheel. You might be able to see it in the corner. And the part is just held in an angled grinding wise and I'm using a straight dress wheel to grind the angled side of the V. And the nice thing is with this gauge I made I can check my dimensions during the process of grinding. Just like this, drop it in, press it down, take a reading and go on. Here we are again from my perspective. Dropping the gauge in, pressing down on both ends and taking a reading. This one is already ground to final dimension, so I get a, a nice zero reading on the DTI. Uh, and that's the way how this, this gauge works. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised how good it works. And also the grinding is very quick. Um, I take a measurement and if I'm off I just uh, go back, grind, I can move out, I have my diamond dresser over here to redress the wheel after a few parts and everything's hunky-dory. The parts are just held in the grinding wise at an angle, no need for a sign plate. The device is set at an angle using a sign bar. And here is one part done. Nine to go. Uh, the parallels uh, are held in place with a spring in between. That's the reason why, why this one here defies gravity. So, drop another part in, press it down firmly, and take a wrench to lock it in place. Doesn't need, doesn't need full full grunt, but shouldn't fly out of the, out of the grinding wise. So raise the wheel so we do not <laughs> create a crash crashing situation here okay uh, checking for clearance and this prism has of course two sides so here i'm grinding the first side this is an aluminum oxide wheel um, 60 grit and i have a relatively fine dress on it and i'm just plunging straight down i'm not side traversing moving out and both sides of the uh, prism has to be ground so here I'm flipping the part around in the grinding wise make sure that I raise the wheel head otherwise crash and grinding the second side I have about 0.25 millimeter allowance per side uh, just just plunging down straight and when I'm close to my final dimension I'm using the gauge to check my dimensions then I do a, f a final grind there we go that's uh, roughly uh, and there you see it spot on. Construction of this measuring device was fairly simple. It started out as a piece of 10 mm cold rolled flat stock, uh, just mild steel. I band saw the rough shape and then I milled, uh, milled all the, the surfaces to size, roughly to size. This is not, not none of the outside dimension of the thing or any critical. Then I went ahead and cut the recess on the, on the bottom of it and two steps that the carbide pins get silver sorted into. This picture shows the setup to cut the slot for the flex drill. If I had to do this over I would make, I would give the flex drill a le longer lever and also not just a, a radius on top but an actual horizontal slot so there is a, a longer bending beam. This flexture, like on, on this part, is very, very stiff. This flexture has a very short range before it deforms permanently. 
After that, I silver soldered the pins in. Uh, these are six millimeter carbide pins, uh, cut off end mill shanks. Um, added the holder for the dial test indicator. Uh, rounded everything over, deburred everything, used the sanding sponge to ease all the edges and corners, and then I sandblasted it using uh, 40 micron aluminum oxide in blasting cabinet. And that's what I got. Um, pretty decent looking instrument, which I probably will never use again, but it was worth the time investment. Otherwise I would have gone crazy using uh, pins and gauge blocks to check each part on the machine during grinding. Uh, that, that's, not, that's not an option. So I think this, it was the right decision to go the extra step and build custom instrument. And if I have to do some WW83 watchmaker's lathe prisms again, I still have the device. <laughs> so it goes to show can pay off to build a custom instrument. Has to, hasn't to be very complicated. This is relatively simple. Um, yeah. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.